Chapter 11, Fun with Hypnosis. When Harold bent down to close a file cabinet, he took a quick look inside. Whoa, he cried, look at all the stuff in here. The file cabinet was filled with everything Mr. Krupp had taken away from the boys over the years. There were slingshots, whoopee cushions, do skateboards, fake doggy doo-doo, you name it, it was in there. Look at this, cried George, a big stack of Captain Underpants comics. He's got every issue, said Harold. For hours, the two boys sat on the floor, laughing and reading their comics. Finally, George looked up at the clock. Yikes, he said. It's almost lunchtime. We better clean up this mess and get to class. The boys looked up at their principal, who had been standing behind them in a trance all morning. Gee, I almost forgot about Mr. Krupp, said Harold. What should we do with him? Do you want to have some fun, asked George. Why not, said Harold. I haven't had any fun in the last four to six weeks. Cool, said George. He walked up to Mr. Krupp and snapped his fingers. Snap! You are a chicken, he said. Suddenly, Mr. Krupp leaped onto his desk and flapped his arms. Cluck, 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 he cried, kicking his papers off the desk behind him and pecking at his pen and pencil set. George and Harold howled with laughter. Let me try, let me try, said Harold. You, um, you are a, a monkey. You gotta snap your fingers, said George. Oh, yeah, said Harold. Snap. You are a monkey. Suddenly, Mr. Krupp sprang off his desk and began swinging from the fluorescent light fixtures. Ooh, 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 he shrieked, leaping from one side of the room to the other. George and Harold laughed so hard they almost cried. My turn, my turn, said George. Let's see, what should we turn him into next? I know, Harold said, holding up a Captain Underpants comic. Let's turn him into Captain Underpants. Good idea, said George. Snap, you are now the greatest superhero of all time, the amazing Captain Underpants. Mr. Krupp tore down the red curtain from his office window and tied it around his neck. Then he took off his shoes, socks, shirt, pants, and his awful toupee. Tra-la-la, -la, he sang. Mr. Krupp stood before them, looking quite triumphant, with his cape blowing in the breeze of the open window. George and Harold were dumbfounded. You know, said George, he kind of looks like Captain Underpants. Yeah, Harold replied. After a short silence, the two boys looked at each other and burst into laughter. George and Harold had never laughed so hard in all their lives. Tears ran down their faces as they rolled about the floor, shrieking in hysterics. After a while, George pulled himself up from the floor for another look. Hey, George cried, where'd he go? Chapter 12, Out the Window. George and Harold dashed to the window and looked out. There, running across the parking lot, was a pudgy old guy in his underwear with a red cape flowing behind him. Tra-la-la! Mr. Krupp, come back, shouted Harold. We he won't answer to that, said George. He thinks he's Captain Underpants now. Oh, no, said Harold. He's probably running off to fight crime, said George. Oh, no, said Harold. And we gotta stop him, said George. Oh, no, cried Harold. No way! Look, said George, he could get killed out there. Harold was unmoved. Or worse, said George, we could get into big trouble. You're right, said Harold, we gotta go after him. The two boys opened the bottom file cabinet drawer and took out their slingshots and skateboards. Do you think we should bring anything else, asked Harold. Yeah, said George, let's bring the fake doggy doo-doo. Good thinking, said Harold, you just never know when fake doggy doo-doo is going to come in handy. Harold stuffed Mr. Krupp's clothes, shoes, and toupee into his backpack. Then together, the two boys leaped out the window, slid down the flagpole, and took off on their, on their skateboards after the amazing Captain Underpants. Chapter 13, Bank Robbers. George and Harold rode their skateboards all over town looking for Captain Underpants. I can't find him anywhere, said Harold. You think a guy like him would be easy to spot, said George. Then the boys turned a corner, and there he was. Captain Underpants was standing in front of a bank, looking quite heroic. Mr. Krupp, cried Harold. Shh, said George. Don't call him that. Call him Captain Underpants. Oh, yeah, said Harold. And don't forget to snap your fingers, said George. Right, said Harold. Ring! But before he got a chance, the bank doors flew open and out stepped two robbers. The robbers took one look at Captain Underpants and stopped dead in their tracks. Surrender, said Captain Underpants, or I will have to resort to wedgie power. Oh no, whispered Harold and George. Nobody moved for about ten seconds. Finally, the robbers looked at each other and burst out laughing. They dropped their loot and fell to the sidewalk, screaming in hysterics. 
Almost immediately, the cops showed up and arrested the crooks. Let that be a lesson to you, cried Captain Underpants. Never underestimate the power of underwear. The police chief, looking quite angry, marched over to Captain Underpants. And just who the heck are you supposed to be, the police chief demanded. Why, I'm Captain Underpants, the world's greatest superhero, said Captain Underpants. I fight for truth, justice, and all of that pre-shrunk and cottony. Oh yeah, shouted the police chief. Cuff em, boys. One of the cops took out his handcuffs and grabbed Captain Underpants by the arm. Zoom! Uh-oh, cried George, we got a roll! Together, the two boys zoomed into the crowd, weaving in and out of cops and bystanders. Harold skated up to Captain Underpants and knocked the superhero off his feet. George caught him, and the boys skated away with Captain Underpants on their shoulders. Stop, cried the cops, but it was too late. George, Harold, and Captain Underpants were gone. Chapter 14, The Big Bang After their quick escape, George, Harold, and Captain Underpants stopped on a deserted street corner to catch their breath. Okay, said George, let's dehypnotize him quick before something else, kaboom, happens. A huge explosion came from the rare crystal shop across the street. Heavy smoke poured out of the building. Suddenly, two robots with one stolen crystal emerged from the smoke and jumped into an old van. Did I just see two robots get into a van, asked Harold. You know, said George, up until now, this story was almost believable. Well, believable or not, said Harold, we're not getting involved. I repeat, we are not getting involved. Just then, Captain Underpants leaped from the street corner and dashed in front of the van. Stop, in the name of underwear, he cried. Oh, said George, I think we are involved. The two robots starred up the van and swerved around Captain Underpants. Unfortunately, the van brushed up against his red cape and it got caught. With a mighty jerk, Captain Underpants whipped backward and the van pulled him long as it drove away. Grab him, cried George. The two boys skateboarded with all their might toward the speeding van and grabbed Captain Underpants by the ankles. Help, they cried as the van pulled them through the city streets. Mommy, said a little boy sitting on a bench. I just saw two robots driving a van with a guy in his underwear hanging off back to back by a red cape, pulling his two boys on skateboards behind him with his feet. How do you expect me to believe such a ridiculous story, asked his mother. Finally, the van came to a screeching halt in front of an ab old abandoned warehouse. The sun stop made Captain Underpants flip over the roof of the van and crash through the front door of the building. Well, 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 said a strange voice from inside the warehouse. It looks as if we have a visitor. Chapter 15, Dr. Diaper. George and Harold hid behind the van until the coast was cleared. Then they sneaked up to the hole in the door and peeked inside. Captain Underpants was all tied up, the two robots were standing guard, and a strange little man wearing a diaper was laughing maniacally. I am the evil Dr. Diaper, the strange little man told Captain Underpants, and you will be the first to witness my takeover of the world. Dr. Diaper placed the stolen crystal into a large machine called the Lasermatic 2000. The machine started to light up and make loud noises. Heavy gears began shifting and spinning, and a laser beam from the crystal shot straight up through a hole in the roof. In exactly 20 minutes, this laser beam will blow up the moon and send huge checks of it crashing down upon every major city in the world, laughed Dr. Diaper. Then I'll rise from the rubble and take over the planet. Only one thing can help us now, said George. What? asked Harold. Rubber doggy doo doo, said George. Harold took the fake doggy doo doo and the slingshot from George's backpack and handed them to him. Be careful, said Harold. The fate of the entire planet is in your hands. With careful and precise aim, George shot the rubber doo doo through the air and across the room. It landed with a plop right at the feet of Dr. Diaper. Yes, whispered George and Harold. Plop! Dr. Diaper looked down at the doo doo between his feet and turned bright red. Oh, dear me, he cried. I'm dreadfully embarrassed. Please excuse me. He began to waddle toward the restroom. This has never happened to me before, I assure you, he said. I, I guess with all the excitement, I just, I just, oh, dear, oh, dear. While Dr. Diaper was off changing himself, George and Harold sneaked into the old warehouse. Immediately, the robots detected the boys and began marching toward them. Destroy the intruders, said the robots. Destroy the intruders. 
George and Harold screamed and ran to the back of the warehouse. Luckily, George found two old boards and gave one of them to Harold. We're not going to have to resort to extremely graphic violence, are we? asked Harold. I sure hope not, said George. Chapter 16, the incredibly graphic violence chapter. Warning, the following chapter contains graphic scenes showing two boys beating the tar out of a couple of robots. If you have high blood pressure or if you faint at the sight of motor oil, we strongly urge you to take better care of yourself and stop being such a baby. As everybody knows, nothing enhances silly action sequences more than really cheesy animation. And so, for the first time in the history of great literature, we proudly bring you the latest in cheesy animation technology, the art of Flipporama. Robot Rampage. George saves a day. Harold returns the favor. Mix nuts and bolts. Chapter 17, The Escape. After defeating the robots, George and Harold untied Captain Underpants. Come on, cried Harold, let's get out of here. Wait, said Captain Underpants, we have to save the world first. So George, Harold, and Captain Underpants flack frantically looked all over the Lasermatic 2000, searching for a way to shut it down and stop the inevitable disaster. Um, said Harold, I think this might be the lever we want. He pulled the self-destruct lever with all his might. Suddenly, the Lasermatic 2000 began to sputter and shake. The huge laser beam turned off, and pieces of the machine began flying off in all directions. It's gonna blow, cried Harold. Run for your lives! Not so fast, screamed Dr. Diaper, who had appeared out of nowhere. You demolished my robots, you destroyed my Laser Mag 2000, and you ruined my one chance to take over the world, but you won't live to tell the tale. Dr. Diaper pulled out his Diapermatic 2000 ray gun and pointed it at George Harold and Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants quickly stretched a pair of underwear and shot it at Dr. Diaper. The underwear landed right on the evil doctor's head. Help! cried Dr. Diaper. I can't see! I can't see! Stretch! Snap! George and Harold ran out of the warehouse as fast as they could. Great shot, Captain Underpants! cried Harold. There's just one thing I don't understand, said George. Where do you get that extra pair of underwear? What extra pair? said Captain Underpants. Never mind that, cried George. Let's just get out of here before that laser medic 2000 thing X. Kaboom! Explodes. The Lasermatic 2000 blew up, tearing apart the old warehouse. It sent flaming shards of red hot metal in every direction. Fire fell from the skies around our heroes, and the earth began to crumble beneath their feet. Oh no! cried Harold. We're doomed! Boom! Chapter 18. To make a long story short, they got away. Chapter 19, Back to School. George Harold and Captain Underpants made a quick stop outside the police station. They tied Dr. Diaper to a lamppost and attached a note to him. There, said Captain Underpants, that ought to explain everything. Arrest me. Back in 15 minutes. Please don't commit any crimes till we return. Thank you. Then George and Harold led Captain Underpants back to Jerome Horwitz Elementary School. Why are we going here? asked Captain Underpants. Well, said George, you have to do some undercover work here. Yeah, said Harold, reaching into his backpack. Put these clothes on and make it snappy. Don't forget your hair, said George. Captain Underpants quickly got dressed behind some bushes. Well, how do I look? he asked. Pretty good, said George. Now try to look really mad. Captain Underpants made the nastiest face he could. You know, said Harold, he kind of looks like Mr. Krupp. Harold, whispered George, he is Mr. Krupp. Oh, yeah, said Harold. I almost forgot. Before long, they were all back inside Mr. Krupp's office. Okay, Captain Underpants, said George. You are now Mr. Krupp. Snap your fingers, whispered Harold. Oh, yeah, said George. Snap, you are now Mr. Krupp. Who's Mr. Krupp? asked Captain Underpants. Oh, no, cried Harold. It's not working. The boys tried again and again to dehypnotize Captain Underpants, but nothing seemed to work. Hmm, said Harold. Let me see that instruction manual for that ring. George checked his pants pockets. Um, said George, I think I lost it. You what? cried Harold. The two boys searched frantically through the office, but the 3D hypno ring instruction manual was nowhere to be found. 
Never mind, said George. I have an idea. He removed the flowers from a large vase in the corner. Then he poured all, all the water over Captain Underpants's head. What'd you do that for? cried Harold. I saw him do this in a cartoon once, said George, so it's gotta work. After a few minutes, Mr. Crupp slowly came to. What's going on here? he demanded. And why am I all wet? George and Harold had never been so glad to see Cap Mr. Crupp in all their lives. I'm so happy I could cry, said Harold. Well, you're gonna cry when I give that video tip to the football team, said Mr. Crupp. I've had it with you, too. Principal Krupp took the videotape out of his file cabinet. You boys are dead meat, he sneered. He stormed out of his office with the video and headed toward the gym. George and Harold smiled. Wait till the football team sees that video, said Harold. Yeah, said George. I sure hope they like singing purple dragons. Hey, look, said George. I found the 3D Hypno Ring instruction manual. It was in my shirt pocket, not my pants pocket. Well, throw that thing away, said Harold. We'll never need it again. I sure hope not, said George. Warning, whatever you do, don't pour water on anybody's head when they are in a trance. This will cause the hypnotized person to slip back and forth from trance to reality whenever they hear the sound of fingers snapping. Chapter 20, the end? La 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 la, we love Boomer la la. Purple Dragon sing along friends. Things at Jerome Horowitz Elementary School were never quite the same after that fateful day. The football team enjoyed Mr. Crop's video so much that they changed their name from the Knuckleheads to the Purple Dragon sing-along friends. The name change didn't go over too well with the fans, but hey, who's going to argue with a bunch of linebackers? George and Harold went back to their old ways, pulling pranks, cracking jokes, and making new comic books. They had to keep an eye on Mr. Crop, though. Snap! Because for some strange reason, every time he heard the sound of fingers snapping, Snap! Principal Krupp turned back into... You know who! Oh no! cried Harold. Here we go again! said George. Cha la la! The origin of Captain Underpants. Dave Pilkey created Captain Underpants when he was eight years old. It all happened back in 1974 when Dave was a second grader at St. John's Lutheran School in Elyria, Ohio. It might not surprise you to know that Dave Pilkey was a class clown back in the second grade. He was also the class artist. Whenever Dave got a chance, he would draw funny pictures to make his friends laugh. Dave also folded sheets of paper in half to make his own fliparamas, which depicted ridiculous scenes of mayhem. He and his friends called them flip actions back then. Like George and Harold, Dave Pilkey even made his own original comic books. All these scenes were great distractions and annoyances by Dave's cantankerous teacher, Miss Ribble. Not a real name. In the, it was this very teacher, however, who inadvertently gave Dave the idea for Captain Underpants. One day, Miss Ribble was talking to the class and she happened to use the word underwear. Everyone in Dave's class immediately began to laugh. This irritated Dave's teacher and she got very angry. She scolded the children, shouting, Ha ha ha, Dave! Ha 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 ha! Underwear is not funny! Ha 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 ha! This only made the class laugh even harder. At that moment, Dave Pilkey had an epiphany. He realized that underwear was a very powerful thing. Just the mere mention of it could make everyone laugh. That day, Dave Pilkey drew his very first drawing of a caped hero named Captain Underpants. Dave's drawing was an immediate hit with his classmates. Miss Ribble, however, was not amused. She immediately tore up Dave's drawing and sent him out into the hallway. Zong. Mr. Pilkey, out! Dave Pilkey was no stranger to spending time in the hallway. In the second grade, Dave got banished to the hallway almost every day. Usually, he spent this time sneaking up and down the corridors, changing the letters on all the bulletin boards around so that they spelled out ridiculous things. It wasn't long before Miss Ribble got wise to Dave's hallway shenanigans and moved a spare desk out there so he would just stay put. Usually, Dave just drew silly pictures while he sat at his hallway desk. But on the day of Dave's great epiphany, he was inspired. He, get, he began making a comic book about his underwear-clad hero. Captain Underpants flew into action on the pages... Catch a fart! On the pages of Dave's story, defeating terrible monsters, rescuing innocent children, and saving the world in crazy flip action scenes. When Dave was finally allowed back into the classroom, he brought his comic book with him. It didn't take long before Captain Underpants' first adventure began causing outbursts of laughter and... Our school has spit! 
hysteria. Miss Ribble seized Dave's comic, ripped it up, and told him he better straighten up. You can't spend the rest of your life making silly comic books, she told him. Despite his teacher's admonishments, Dave Pilkey did continue making silly books. In fact, Dave's got his very first silly book published when he was still in college. After he graduated, Dave wrote and illustrated many more silly books about dogs, cats, mice, dragons, and dumb bunnies. When he wasn't making books, Dave visited hundreds of schools and libraries and talked with children about his experiences as an author. Every time Dave spoke, he would draw a giant picture of Captain Underpants, which made the children laugh hysterically. At the end of his presentations, kids would always ask Dave the same question. Are you ever going to make a book about Captain Underpants? I don't know, Dave would reply. Do you think I should? The answer was always a resounding, roof-raising scream of, Yes! So in 1996, Dave Pilkey began writing and drawing the book you were holding in your hands right now. Dave wanted to include as much of his own childhood as possible in the book. So he based George and Harold on himself. Like Dave, George and Harold are class clowns and class artists. They make comics, they switch letters around on signs, and they are always getting in trouble with their teachers and principal for one thing or another. And of course, their action scenes are always presented fliparama. Fun facts! Fun fact number one! George and Harold got their names from two famous children's books that Dave Pilkey loved as a child. Curious George and Harold and the Purple Crayon. Fun fact number two, George and Harold's last names, Beard and Hutchins, were the last names of two child actors who appeared in Hal Roach's Our Gang Comedies, also known as The Little Rascals. Dave watched that show every day when he was a kid, and his two favorite characters, Weezer and Stymie, were portrayed by child actors Bobby Hutchins and Matthew Beard. Fun fact number three, Mr. Krupp's last name was also taken from an Our Gang Little Rascals character, sort of. The 1934 short film, Shrimps for a Day, featured an evil, grouchy old man who made quite an impression on Dave Pilkey when he was a kid. The character's name in the film was Mr. Crutch, but Dave remembered it incorrectly. Instead of giving Captain Underpants his alter ego the moniker Mr. Krupp, if Dave Pilkey's memory had been better, Mr. Krupp would have been called Mr. Crutch. Fun fact number four, Jerome Horwitz Elementary School was named after Curly, one of the Three Stooges, another show Dave Pilkey watched every day as a kid. Curly's real name was Jerome Horowitz. Did fun fact number five, Dave Pilkey not only writes all the Captain Underpants stories, but he also does all the illustrations, including the paintings on the covers. It takes Dave about six months to write each book and another six months to draw and paint every picture. Fun fact number six, Dave draws all the interior illustrations with pencil. They are then photocopied onto white cardstock and painted with watercolor paint. The covers are painted in acrylics with a dash of India ink. 